Welcome. Today we're, we're talking about my favorite author, John Steinbeck. Now I've picked out five books that are my favorite and they might not be his top five on a technical level. I've read almost all of his books and I can appreciate the ones that are technically good, but I didn't want to do that for this list. I wanted to pick out the ones that I thought were my favorite, story-wise and all that. So that's what we're going to do. I had to re-record this part because I think I deleted it. Um, my first book, number five, Sweet Thursday. It's, um, it's the second iteration of um, the Cannery Row book. It's uh, it continues that story of Mac and the boys and Doc and introduces a bunch of new characters. It takes place after World War II. Um, it's, I'm not gonna say much about it um, cause maybe or maybe not, there is another book on this list um, that would be more appropriate to talk about. It continues that story um, in a way that I really like. It takes place years later, you know, it has some of the same characters and whatnot, but um, it continues the storylines of, you know, Mac and Doc and all, all those characters. If you read the first book, you know what I'm talking about, but I really like the characters. The main character, Doc, he's a really likable guy. He, um... He's very, he's very charming somehow. He's very stoic, um, but he's friendly. He just wants to be left alone pretty much. He wants to be happy, he wants to enjoy his own thing. But people always bother him. They always want something from him. And I can sort of relate to that. I do have a quote from this book. It's my favorite quote. It's one that stays in my mind even years later. It goes, Sweet Thursday is what they call the day after Lousy Wednesday. One of those days that's just bad from the start. But Sweet Thursday is sunny and clear, a day when anything can happen. My next book, number four, was his last novel he ever wrote. I know later in his career, he went on to write a lot of nonfiction and whatnot, but this is his last piece of fiction. This is The Winter of Our Discontent. The title comes from a Shakespeare quote from Richard III that goes, Now is the winter of our discontent, made glorious summer by the son of York. It's another one of his books. A lot of his books have this theme of just a guy living in a small town that's sort of unhappy with his life. And this story sort of starts out differently. The main character starts out in a way he's he's happy with his life. He has a wife, he has a job he's okay with. He comes from a, a wealthy family and he his family lost all that money from some sort of predatory um, corporation moving in, something like that. It's been a couple of years since I read it. Um, but over the course of the book, his family becomes less and less happy with being poor and being sort of on the bottom rung of the socioeconomic ladder. Um, his children want toys and cereal with cool prizes in it. And his wife wants to walk around town and be one of those rich wives. And he starts to struggle with that. He he turns to sort of illicit means to get money, even though the whole story is about him not really caring about money. He just wants to live a comfortable life and he's happy with his wife and whatnot, but it's it's sort of a melancholic little story about how he's happy, but the people in his life just 
want more and he's unable to do that. Number three is one of his more famous books, The Grapes of Wrath. Um, it's sort of a social commentary. Um, it takes place in the Great Depression. And it's about a family that was originally from Oklahoma. They'd been there, they'd been on that land for a couple generations. And this bank drives them west. They take their lands and you kind of know the story. Um, but they, they're forced west. They just want some work. They just want to be comfortable and feed their family. But no one will allow them to work. No one will allow them to be good, honest, working people. They have to turn to, to more illicit, uh, means of making money. The story follows the family during this degradation process where you can see like their family unit sort of falls apart. They get really unhappy with each other. They do things that they know are wrong and they hurt people and it's it's a whole it's it's a, just a really good book. It it could have gone farther down on my list. I I really like this book. The next book is less of a novel, more of a novella. It's very short. It took me about a day to read, just an afternoon or something like that. That's The Pearl. Um, it's one of his more famous short stories. It follows a, a poor family in in Mexico, they just had a kid. They're, the main character, Kino, his wife, Juana, they, um, they're pearl divers, you know, they go out on their boat and they hunt little pearls from clams and whatnot. And one day they come across the big pearl, you know, the, the, big, the, big, the big boy, the one that's gonna make them rich. But, with money, you know, comes a lot of bad things as they come to realize they, uh, their friends sort of turn on them. People, people want to kill them. They get hunted down and they realize that this pearl, this wealth made their lives like much, much worse. Meanwhile, that was all that they were looking to get all their lives was this big break where they no longer had to worry about feeding their kid. It's just a really nice little story about, you know, how you don't always get what you want and more so like being careful what you wish for, you know? It's not always what you think you're gonna get. Last, but certainly not least, my favorite, number one, I don't have the physical copy with me, but I do have a list of his short stories, which it is in. Cannery Row, one of his more famous books. I didn't talk about Sweet Thursday that much because I didn't want to give it away, give away my number one, but it's, it's the first iteration of the two book Canary Row series. Uh, follows a couple of main storylines with Doc and Mac and the boys and Lee Chong and the neighborhood grocer. And I couldn't tell you all that much about the story um, because that's not like the main, the main reason to read this book. It's more of the feeling you get when you read this book. It's a, you get this really nice feeling of nostalgia, this really small town vibe you get. It's about a, a small town on the coast of California, a like a fishing village, you know, Monterey, California. It's not such a small town anymore. I was there about a month or two ago. It's 
it's a nice place now. It's very touristy now, but it's 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 all contained into this little setting of the town of Monterey. And I like when stories do that. I like when authors are able to tell a compelling story with few characters, few um, points of setting, you know, it's, it's really impressive. That is it, that is my top five. Sorry about the lighting. I know it's bad. Um, nothing I can do about it, but hope you enjoyed. Thanks for watching.